like to thank the ranking member and uh, all my predecessors who worked on this great bipartisan work back in the 90s and uh, for all my my friends and colleagues that are, are working on it today uh, to try to make it a bipartisan agreement. It's, it's beyond all of us why uh, the Democrats would want so much, so much uh, uh, commitment to make the American people be dependent on the federal government. You know, I, I know mo uh, better than most uh, the folks about the life-changing uh, power of work. I grew up uh, with a stepdad whose hardest work was running to the mailbox to get a welfare check when they still sent welfare checks to the, to the mailbox. And from a young age, I, I knew that uh, that wasn't going to be my life. And as the oldest of five kids, I remember it very well. Uh, and I, I just, for, for the life of me today, I, I can still remember standing at a grocery store and my mother having me send stuff back to the shelf because you couldn't buy it with food stamps. I'm a, I'm a child that lived on AFDC. I, I remember those, those acronyms very well. And, uh, you know, I, I can tell you right now, uh, because of my upbringing, I experienced a lot more failures than I did success, successes. But as my uh, friend from Pennsylvania acknowledged there, that uh, that's what the American dream is all about, is you take a risk, you get knocked down, you get up and you do it again and again and again. And your journey of the American dream is not a destination. It is a place that you continue to work until you're not here anymore. Uh, I'm reminded quite often of the great quote from my hero, Ronald Reagan, who said that the greatest social program in the world is a job. And we all know, uh, as Chairman Camp just said, that we're not here to end the social safety net. That's that's where, as Americans, we love our fellow Americans. We know people have hard times. We also know that a welfare check can help out in those hard times to get a hand up to help American people, uh, to American citizens, not those who are not citizens, but only a paycheck from a job and, and real work can help bring sustainability to uh, getting out of poverty. Unfortunately, our, our country is going through this the same example of uh, after the pandemic, 9.3 million jobs and in a government administration that is uh, paying people more to stay home than they are to work. And we're spending trillions of dollars on welfare programs, which is tragic. Uh, so in, in, instead of helping people get out of poverty, uh, Joe Biden and the Democrats are wanting to keep people in poverty because I do believe what we're seeing is this total uh, onset of socialism in this country, probably the greatest threat we've ever had of complete dominance of the American workforce with complete dependence upon the American government. Uh, it doesn't uh, help anyone, this poverty cycle and growing up in a low income community, coming from school to a house where I wasn't sure if I was going to have any running water, indoor plumbing, uh, of which I didn't have either one until I was in the eighth grade. Uh, I saw firsthand how welfare programs, uh, when they are taken on, can keep people beat down. And so when we have the kind of stuff going on uh, today, it really makes me proud to support the Jobs for Success Act. And Matt, I want to talk to you about the TANF program. I think it's, a, it's an example of you know working and getting help from the, from the American taxpayers, not the government per se. Um, one of the concerns I have for me is if you make that next dollar, you lose all your benefits. And I don't know if you've thought through this process, how we could help our benefits programs, our social safety net programs, not penalize people who want to go back to work and, and ease their self off of that, those programs. Sure. Um, well, actually, one of the advantages of the TANF program was um, it gave states more flexibility to let people um, earn more while receiving benefits and also receive additional support so they could work and, and earn their way off of welfare. Um, so TANF tended not to have those sort of hard cliffs. I think what Dr. Wenstrup was saying is once you start combining that with other benefits and you, you, know, you make it harder, eventually you hit these sort of welfare traps. Um, there are a number of ways to try to address that. Um, Unfortunately, sometimes what it ends up doing is it ends up costing taxpayers more, right? Because you have to expand benefits to make sure that people are not hitting these cliffs as they go up income ladders. So I think what policymakers end up considering instead of that is apply work requirements to more programs, right? Like condition the receipt of more of those benefits on um, individuals participating in education and training, other things um, that help shrink the caseload, quite frankly, because some people respond to that by saying, I don't need those benefits and also make sure you're, you're giving benefits to people who actually want to help themselves um, and otherwise trying to better coordinate programs. And that, you know, gets into this whole discussion about, um, you know, sort of global reform, coordination between TANF and housing and food stamps and you name it. Um, and that's a conversation that goes well beyond ways and means. 
but is the kind of thing that if you know the government wanted to really look at a thorough welfare reform plan would be the type of thing that they would do. Thanks, Matt, and I yield back.